Despite the economic downturn, governments around the world are shelling out billions right now, banking on the power of the wind to power their economies. But we're not talking wind power like we'd see here in Canada on land. European nations are harnessing the wind over water. Now it's coming to Canada, and it could mean countless new jobs. On the coastal waters and lakes of Canada, there is a quiet race to catch the wind and to catch up with the rest of the world. Invisible to the eye, the potential here is so great, some say it could answer the energy needs of our entire country 40 times over. The concept is to take a giant turbine, three times the size of one you'd see on land, and plant it in water. In the last few years, offshore wind energy has exploded in Europe. Eight countries already have projects running with billions of dollars invested. The belief is that offshore wind is 30% more effective than onshore because there are no mountains or hills to contend with. Still, not a single project is operational in all of North America, despite our vast potential. Canada is uh, one of the slowest countries uh, to develop. Uh, offshore wind uh, capacity and it's surprising because we actually have the second largest capacity in the world for wind power generation. We're being left behind. We're bleeding good companies and good investors who are moving to other countries. Slowly though, a race to plant the first ever offshore wind farm in Canada is emerging. Three companies are leading the pack. Off the north coast of British Columbia, the Nikoon Project. I would say it's almost a certainty, a certainty we'll be the first in Canada. Off the eastern shoreline of Lake Ontario, Trillium Power Wind One. I don't think that we have to take a back seat to anyone. And further west along the lake, the Toronto Hydro Project. I think we all have to take responsibility for how we power our homes and businesses. The latter is perhaps the most controversial. A proposed farm two to four kilometers off the Scarborough Bluffs just outside Toronto that many homeowners argue will obstruct their lake view. Roy Wright is one of them. They say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I say beauty is in the eye of the shareholder. They talk about these large machines as being uh, contemporary, majestic, all these wonderful terms, but uh, being an artist, I, I think nature is much better. Wright has joined other community members like John Lafarette to form the group Save the Toronto Bluffs. We are fighting a green energy project, but it's an irresponsible project. But by all accounts, if Lake Ontario is to see a field of turbines spinning in its waters, John Kortoff's Trillium project near Prince Edward County will likely be first. Not ex exploring and looking and doing it correctly would be much like asking Alberta never to have explored uh, petroleum. Worth $2.5 billion, 140 giant turbines would be planted in the shallow waters 20 kilometers offshore harnessing enough energy to power 300,000 households. I think people didn't realize the potential in the Great Lakes and that the companies are able to build this amount of offshore. But the offshore wind potential in Canada isn't limited to its lakes. Nikoon Wind Energy is looking to change the face of the Pacific Ocean with a proposed site in the Hecate Strait. This is a massive project, a mega project by, by any definition. So there'll be 110 turbines, they'll be spread out about a kilometer apart, and then there will be a cable buried under the seabed running over to Prince Rupert to hook up to the mainland uh, transmission grid. You're literally going to take these turbines and anchor them into the ocean floor. That's right, that's right. By 2014, Nikoon hopes to be powering 130,000 households with its turbines and empowering its people. The chief of the Haida Nation Alan Wilson. It's almost staggering really because in almost every part of the wind farms there's somebody going to be working. 150 construction jobs and 50 permanent positions. It may not sound like a lot but for a small community struggling with high unemployment it's significant. It's amazing to be able to harness something that's been here all the time and we never even thought of it. Others are banking on those jobs too. Safety glasses and closed in shoes. In Ontario, just down the road from the proposed Trillium site, St. Lawrence College has launched the only wind turbine technician program in the province. According to the program coordinator, Romy Bauer, the demand was so great, they took in twice as many students as planned. There will be the big need and there is the big need coming now of that we need to train wind turbine technicians. 
That isn't to say offshore wind is the panacea for our energy needs. There are environmental concerns, crab fisheries, bird migrations. But according to environmental consultant Brian Yates, the effects are minor. The fact is, is that offshore wind energy is going to save birds. Offshore wind energy is going to save marine life in the longer term because it's going to reduce the effects of, of climate change, which are actually the big looming threat. It's on the basis of this evidence companies and advocates are pushing our politicians to make offshore wind energy a priority, changing the landscape of our country and the way we power our lives. There's no question that we need the federal government to step up to the plate and to support this industry if we want it to flourish. And that's what's happened in other countries. The UK this summer put a billion dollars into offshore wind, and that's why they're winning the race.